Well, hello there, humans, hippies, earthlings, small, tall, short, round, wherever you are, whatever you are. Blah, 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 let's try that again. Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and whoever you're doing it to, uh, very soon you'll probably be doing it in an IS3 Defender, and that's why I am making this video. Uh, very, very popular, the IS3 Defender vid I posted up on the portal. Uh, which has been seen by, I think it's about 24,000 now. It's It's been a very popular vid. As such, I thought I would do a full-length follow-up, much like I did with the T59, and that was also uh, quite a popular video. Uh, it seems like a lot of people are really keen on this tank. It's interesting. It's unique. It's got something that we haven't seen at Tier 8 before, especially not on a heavy, which is an autoloader. And it's got a lot of the good things that make the IS-3 itself, which this tank is based upon, a great surefire winner. Now, before we do a little bit of housekeeping, uh, I'm sorry to say that none of this uh, video, the gameplay video, was recorded via airplane stream to my PC, so the audio is non-existent and the quality is a little bit under where I'd like it to be. Now, I've been faced with a very tough choice this month. I'm basically quite busy at work. We're back. We're fully into the swing of things with the family, all the commitments that we have as proper human beings. It's very, very tough to sit down at home and play games into a laptop, stream them and record them. Uh, mate, I'm just not getting it done. And, it, and I've been faced with the choice of either using a screen record on my iPad, which I'm doing at the moment, to get content out there or getting no content out there whatsoever. And obviously, something is better than nothing. So I'd just like you to bear with me and understand that I under, it's not the best quality. I know that. Um, I'd like it to be, but until we start making enough money to, to live off on this channel. I'll be working full time like the rest of you poor sods. Um, on that point, if you have thought about sponsoring the channel, it would make my life a lot easier. It is there, the Patreon link. You can follow that. Thank you very much to all of you who've been supporting it. The channel is going from strength to strength. It's one of the reasons why it's been so busy. Maintaining the thing now has become an art form in itself. We're at over 8,000 subs, 8,300 and something at the moment. Over 810 views, 810,000 views and uh, heading towards the million view mark, which is very exciting. But back to the IS3 Defender. Why is it so sought after? Why does everyone want to know about it? Well, the big part about it is obviously the autoloader. Three shots in a clip, 7.5 seconds between each shot. So from one shot to the third shot is 15 seconds. Uh, 15 seconds is a long time in this game. Still, it promotes that peek a boom play style that the IS-3 itself is famous for and most of the Russian tanks employ that big pop-out and derp play style. It's got typical Russian gun handling though. So it will surprise you, uh, no doubt, to find that I've opted for all the gun handling help I can get. I'm running Vert Stabilizer, I am running Enhanced Gun Laying Drive, I am running Vents and I am running Rations. Might seem over the top, but I saw a marked improvement in my gameplay when I changed up to um, to the uh, enhanced gun lane drive and V stab combo, rather than running uh, something more mundane like a toolbox or anything else. Um, you can't run a rammer on this tank, so don't even worry about it. You are running an auto loader. You can't increase the speed of that auto loader. You can, however. Uh, help the gun handling, which is horrific. 0.43 dispersion, 3.4 second aim time. Um, your pen numbers are all right. They're slightly better than the IS-3. You've got 270 pen on your heat, which means you can be helpful and competitive at tier X, but your armor is negligible at that tier. Everyone is going to pen you frontally, even when you poke your nose directly at them, which is where you should be uh, with this tank. You should all be facing directly at the enemy. Um, you make a lot of money. It makes great coin. It's it's much like the T34. I don't know if it's the same or as much as the Louvre or the T3485 Victory, which have credit coefficients somewhere in the 188 percentile. Uh, but the IS-6 has 156%, and it seems maybe a touch better than the IS-6. Um, you can make a fair bit of cash, and it's very good for grinding cash, which it should be, because it isn't an easy tank to get. The marathon has obviously been a long and daunting process for some of you. Now... I want to talk about how you play the tank and how I play the tank. I play it very much as a breakthrough tank. It is a very quick tank for a heavy, 40 kilometers an hour, 26 degrees of traverse track-wise and 20 degrees of 
turret traverse, very reminiscent of the M103's numbers in terms of traverse. Their 26 degrees is quite bloody good for a heavy. Um, your low profile, as you can see, sliding between the dunes here is not that tough, a, it's that tough an ask. Uh, and you do have a stronger turret than the IS-3, which is worth noting. For all that though, uh, the joy is the autoloader. You can see here, we're gonna ambush this M103. He has no idea where we are and I'm pulling back so that he won't actually see me. Now this is where the tank is ideal. You can see low profile, they can't see me. Even though it's a tier nine game, I've moved right up to a position where I can flank fire. And when these boys roll forward and feel rambunctious, we will have shots to go. There we go, there's the first one. And that ST1 on my right, he's stocked, but he's playing a very good move. He's, he's moving up here with me. We've loaded the heat and we are now gonna get another one in and that's the joy of this autoloader. You wanna find situations like this where you can push on a flank or push through a, a bridgehead when you are the top tier tank and get shots off and then you pop back. And you can see that that was a really effective use of the three shot clip. We're now on a reload. Why am I not running away? Because one of the worst things you can do in this tank is start backing away wildly when you're reloading because other tanks will realize this if they've got half a clue and they will push up on you and absolutely murder you while you're on a reload. So you always wanna sometimes be a little bit sneaky like you do have one in the clip and actually push forward. Uh, it can put tanks off. They can think that you've got a reload going and I've done it many times in this tank where they, uh, they actually back away where you're you're yelling wolf. You're basically running forward bluffing and they think you've got a full clip in you. Uh, here we go. You can see 40 kilometers an hour getting around, tracking that E75 and moving around behind him. And we are now on Z reload. You can see how long this reload takes. But because you're a low profile tank, I'm hiding behind an Indian. I was never gonna get hit by that E75. They're very, very handy. Now I'm running with Pimp Daddy in this one. Um, I just want to illustrate, we actually run into another IS-3 defender. Short, sharp confrontations like this are the bread and butter of this tank. Um, quite apart from the fact that you've got a Tesla coil in the back of the thing, so it looks like it's running on raw battery power. Um, the auto loader is the best part of the tank. Now you're gonna get a look at the armor profile. I load heat for this IS-3 defender that's coming up, and there's an IS-6 here as well. I'm basically expecting them, um, so when the Chi Re drops, I'm actually changing back to APCR, which is your standard ammunition. You've got 270 pen on your heat though, which means that when you run into other tanks like IS-6s frontally, you can handle them. Pimp's pushed up there on the IS-6. And you'll note, if you've got half a clue in this, every time you're on a reload, you, you pretty much should be telling the rest of your team that you're reloading, because then they realize that they, you're not covering anything. And you'll see here, I've got nothing in the spout, but I'm pushing forward on this IS-3 defender, because he's not actually too sure if I do or I don't. Pimp's coming around, I'm gonna have a crack at this IS-3 defender. I'm pretty sure he's about to be on a reload. Once he fires, one more, here we go. He's backing away merrily. So I'm telling Pimp, this is who I am shooting at. And you'll see here, with heat, you can get through the front very easily. With APCR, not so easy at all. And his turret is actually quite strong. Um, it's all that front armor, much like the IS-3. Once you can pen it, you can just flat out pen it. Now, I'm on a reload. I've called, called SOS for Pimp. Pimp's going to turn around and nut him. He's heard me say, thank you, thank you, help, 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 reloading, reloading. He finishes him and we roll forward. If you make one change to your play style for this tank and one change to my normal play style for this tank, it would be that I would be more aggressive in it. And I know that sounds probably counterintuitive considering the way I normally play, which is uh, not to give up hit points. And I'm not saying that you should YOLO or go hell for leather in this tank. What I'm saying is that basically you want to empty your clip into the enemy heavies. You want to get there. You don't want to be the guy left standing at the back because you don't have the gun handling to really be effective. 3.4 second aim time is massive. Um, and even if you're running V-stab and enhanced gun laying drive, um, your gun handling can absolutely ruin you. Now, you'll see in this game um, what I'm talking about. We're going to the top. They've got six heavies. This marathon, this ice cream defender marathon has brought out some absolutely horrific gameplay. People are sleepwalking through games and I, fair enough, I understand it's a big ask. There's over 700,000 XP to get this tank if you're gonna grind through it. 
and it's brought out a lot of people that are literally just playing games to get through the game, get some XP, get carried or not, and see how they go. Everyone's got to play. Everyone does it fair, firm, however you want to do it. But I know there's going to be a massive amount of heavies going up here. So I'm switching to heat. I want to get every shot I can in here. And this is where the tank can be really effective. Seven and a half seconds between 400 alpha shots means that you are literally pumping out enough damage when they're coming forward to really put people off. Now, you have four and a half rounds a minute, basically. But obviously, it's more like you've got three rounds in 15 seconds and then you bugger off and don't get hit and hide until that is ready to roll again. You'll rarely get in a situation where it's just a flat-out DPM race. But if you do, uh, it's worth knowing that you've got more DPM than the old standard IS-3 or the T-34, uh, for that matter, or the IS-6. Out of all those four Tier 8 heavies that are quite renowned, three of them being premium tanks, you have the best damage per minute stats. You've also got really good penetration numbers. Not, not as good as a T-34 that gets up towards 300 millimeters of pen on its APCR, but you do have um, very solid, and you get heat, which is lovely against plate. Now you can see here, low profile tank, we're just sneaking along here, doing our best, not really exposing ourselves at all. It does suit a hull down position. I don't have a lot of hull down gameplay here, but it certainly is something that suits the tank very well. The turret is stronger than your standard IS-3 turret. Um, it still has a weak point on the top, but as long as you're slightly elevated, it'll both help your uh, armor, your top armor on top of the turret, and it'll also help that upper glacis, which at all times should be pointed towards the enemy, except when you can't point it towards the enemy, like this situation here. Uh, if we were pointing towards the enemy, we would not have the gun depression to get down and put shots into anyone. Now you can see we've more or less held this while the rest of the numpties, and I am going to say there's a couple of games here, you'll see just how angry and frustrated I am. I, uh, I don't normally chirp away in game, but I do have a little dig at these guys at the end of it. Because there's a T44 and myself who do most of the damage here. And the tier, tier 8 IS-6 basically flanked through the back. I mean, you can see them all coming up. Five heavies, and they all flanked. If we hadn't held this spot here, it was going to be an easy win for the red guys. As it was, though, that's what the tank does best. It's a, it's a shock tank. It's a tank that you get out there, you drive it hard, you smack for 1,200 damage, and then you hide it. As long as you stick to those principles, you're going to be pretty successful in this thing. It's one of the more interesting tanks because usually heavies don't have the best DPM running around. And while this DPM is not incredible, it's certainly very, very strong for a heavy. And its ability to burst really hard makes two of these in platoon incredibly effective. You can drop 2400 DPM in 15 seconds with two of these firing at one tank sometimes more, sometimes a little bit less. And that's enough to put the, the mockers on just about anyone. So if you are looking for a fun, effective way to play the game um, and grind credits, the IS-3 Defender is brilliant at it. You saw me there have a go at these guys, and you'll see why when we have a look at the scoreboard and why I said I feel like I have heavy, you know, sore shoulders because these guys really did muck around, not do much, and left it up to us guys at the top. That KV-3 did a good job too. Very, very good support. Um, we did over 4K there, I think. And you'll see the, the coin, very solid coin. 86,000 credits, 4,500 damage, nearly 4,600. Only a second class, but we did get through a lot of expendables. We used 7 heat there and rations. So you're making nearly 100 grand if you're not using your rations, which is a great amount of money. This one, <laughs> I'm sorry, Pim. I'll say that right at the start. Pimp and I had a run where everyone on our team was dying. We had more zeros than you could poke a stick at. Uh, it was like some kind of calculus. It was zero, 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 or binary rather, not calculus. Um, so I am going as hard as I can. They're all mediums. I want to get to grips with these dudes and absolutely smash them ASAP. Uh, Pimp's in a KV4. He can't keep up. Um, I've left him at the back, so what I'm thinking is I'm just going to drive through as hard as I could, leverage off Pimp, pincer them. Sadly, though, everyone uh, followed me, and Pimp got left on his own, so I apologize to Pimp. He's carried me plenty of times. We actually had a really good run in the KV-4 IS-3 duo. It suited down to the ground, where the KV-4 was a really strong uh, presence, could hold a line very, very well, and you could uh, leverage off that strength to move around the, the map 
and put flank shots into people and, and really take advantage of you know a KV4 and its fortress-like abilities to bounce shots, even at tier X, um, and leverage that into really good damage numbers. So pimps, as you can probably see in the southeastern corner of the map, pimps got a lot of friends down there. <laughs> he's, he's doing his best, but this was always going to be a bridge too far for the man from Bangkok. I just anyway, we're pushing down. We're coming back. We're going to give him a hand. We're going to get there way too late, but. I'm quite angry by this stage. I've had enough. If you want to play a tank aggressively, this is the tank for you. Um, you can hide it behind about just about anything. So you can push it right up into the enemy's face, find a very small hill like this, and you're completely hidden. And you can, if you're good enough, you can leverage off that and move around and turn that into a, a very strong defensive position while tanks behind you. Take advantage of that to put really good amounts of fire. And you'll get some decent assisted damage numbers in this tank too, which is lovely. Pretty good at face hugging as well you can get up and face hug tanks um, but you'll see they've got a lot of mediums obviously they don't have any heavies this is the way the game's really been moving lately which has made things a touch frustrating uh, the 59 we're prioritizing he's obviously the more important tank to take out there uh, the tier 7 m10 good tank in its own right but unless it's driven by a very special driver uh, against a tank like this it's going to struggle it just doesn't have the penetration values However, it can put out damage if you let it, so we're backing off. We don't want to get perma-tracked or something and, and run around. There's enough trouble here on our left. Very lucky shot here. We track the T-44, but we track him with his gun up in the air. He doesn't have enough gun depression really to get down and put the shot in that he wants. And Yeah, that's all's fair in love and, uh, love and world of tanks. <laughs> so 44 is probably out of APCR. If that's the case, then he's not going to have very good penetration values at all. And he's only got about six rounds a minute on that gun, probably up to about seven running rammer if he's got rammer and vents in there. So he's not going to tear us apart. The DPM on the 44, none of the tier eight mediums apart from maybe the Indian is uh, is much over 2,000 damage per minute. So we're pretty much okay here while we do the reload and we get the last kill. We use heat just to make sure. Um, probably should have used APCR then because we're firing into his tracks, but we get the job done regardless. Panther M10, Happy, happy days. We'll nail him very comfortably. You can see if you do want to play aggressively, it is an excellent choice for you as a heavy tank. It can get out there and really throttle a flank and dominate and bully medium tanks. Um, you've got to be careful when you drive it like this, though, because if, as you saw with that 44 and you're seeing with this M10, if they realize you're on a reload and they are half a player they can pump a lot of damage into you and get around you and really hurt you um, you don't want to be in a situation where you're just hit point trading because quite often you'll have to just take it um, so the kv1s uh, is with us as well here he finishes him off should have been a lot easier than that i left poor old pimpo to cop it <laughs> it's a good sport about it thank god we were we were feeling the red mist of, uh, of YOLO fever there. It had been a very, very tough day at the office pending that one. Uh, another one over 4K. It's, I don't think I've ever mastered this tank. Um, a lot of people playing it now, uh, which is surprising. But it, it takes a decent, and so it should, it should take more than 4,000 damage. It should probably be about 5,000 or something like that will get you your mastery in this, I'd suggest. Um, here we are, we've pushed up on Port Bay. They didn't have any medium tanks, which is a rare one. So we're pretty confident pushing up and getting shots in. We're just hanging up the top. We've got a KV-4 that has gone town alone here. And is going to do the typical thing where a tank that goes solo to the middle of town in a tier 9 match is going to die and then have a proper old whinge about things. And it's going to be everyone else's fault apart from the guy who decided he was going to go solo. So KV-4, hats off to you for your intended whinge. It's been a lot of this playing. This is what I'm talking about with this Defender Marathon. It's really brought the best out in the world. Um, KV4 is asking for help. No one's anywhere near him. Put himself in there. Anyway, I've got more important things to do here, which is basically have a crack at this E75. One into the top of the turret. Happy days. If you're going to use heat, use it on a T9 Heavy. They're well worth trying. Um, the rest of the team's flanking around through the respawn here. This should be an easier win than it is. There's that Russian gun handling. Absolutely superb. And we get one back, which we fully deserve. 
uh, overexpose ourselves there. Very, very silly. KV4 is now dead, so it's probably time for him to start having a good old whinge about the rest of his team. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's, it's our problem. Everything is our fault. I should shut up here. I can't help myself. Yeah. Totally our goal. Good work, Pushka. You're an idiot. Um, never never argue with fools. I'll just bring you down to your level, their level, and uh, beat you with experience. So we're now up the top. We've not given it up. We're getting nice shots in. They've only got four left, but the rest of the team is going to basically go one at a time towards them and die, which is, you know, probably the right thing to do. Uh, <laughs> if you're looking at it from the red team's perspective, uh, I've got good shots in here, so I'm not moving around too much at the moment. Let the gun radical go all the way down because the gun handling is horrible. These idiots are listening to the KV-4 and I can't stop them from doing it, which is just ridiculous. They are charging. KV-4 is telling them to go and they are going dead. Oh, where do these people get their driver's licenses from? Out of a pack of wheat picks or something. Um, we track that KV-4. Oh, yeah. Our numbers advantage is quickly disappearing, as one might expect. However, we have still got this great position here. We are just constantly putting shots into the sides of these tanks. There's another one down, so it's now three on three. KV-4 has not shut up, did nothing, died first, YOLO'd, and has given nothing but bad advice, and he's still there giving it away. We are on a reload. I'm telling the team that, but that doesn't stop them. They are pushing forward regardless. <laughs> It's the only one left. <laughs> I'm telling you now, this has been the last time there was a marathon on, Tankenstein. Um, we had the same issue where people were basically playing like robots and we've come full circle back to it. Um, easy win IS3. I think he's right, actually. You can probably see here, we've done nothing here but put shots on. We've had an absolute glorious time of it. Uh, that Object 704 has fired. We've got a seven and a half second reload. We are in a fantastic position. There's second kill. We are backing it away. We're going to go around the flank now. We've, we've vampired it a bit. I don't feel bad about this at all. We were probably the best chance for this team winning and yoloing down there and being close to them and being in front of those guns would not have helped the team win at all. It would have basically given the Reds a better opportunity to win. So we've got plenty of stuff in the ticker. There we go. Now the Tiger 2 and we know where the T-34 is because he's telling us because there you go. He's on a cap. So you're probably thinking the T-34 is not the best best player in the world. I don't know whether he is or isn't, but he's made a big tactical error there. Got it down to a one shot, and we've got one left in the barrel. Now, it would be worth maybe possibly doing a full reload here. There's a minute 20 left. If I had have done that, it would have guaranteed that I had three shots, because this is actually a bit dodgy if you get an unlucky bounce or something, but we didn't. We're pretty sure of it. Into the frontal arm of a T-34, no problems whatsoever and we win it with a fair bit to spare. Four kills, over 4K again, and I'm not sure how we went in terms of cash there. Credits here, 94,000 uh, credits, running rations as well, and firing a couple of heat rounds into it. So you can see the KV4, 480 damage, and then abused everyone. So hats off to you, buddy. I hope you enjoyed being carried. You certainly hurt my shoulders with your huge, big Russian butt. So that's the Ice 3 Defender, boys and girls. Fast, quick, aggressive, that's the way to play it. Um, it is no sniper. It is abhorrently bad in terms of gun handling. But the best thing you can do when you've got a gun that doesn't handle very well is put it as close as possible to the enemy and use it like a three-clip shotgun, which is exactly what we do with it, and that's where we have the greatest success. I am running all the gun handling help I can get. Remember that. Vents, rations, gun lane drive, V-stab... You do that, and you're a good chance of actually seeing the Fist of Stalin guide your shots to where they should be. Now, there's a lot more coming up. Obviously, the channel is being plenty active lately. We're doing the One Game Wonder series. 
I've got a bit of a T54 medium masterclass coming up in terms of just a couple of tactics and things you should be doing in your mediums, not just the 54. Um, it's going to be short, sharp, sweet, but it will be very helpful, hopefully, for those of you looking to move up into that tier 9 and 10 Ruskin medium area. Uh, even the, the Chinese T59, the T44, you could benefit a lot from just that video coming up. Um, yeah, I won't say too much more. It'll be out very soon anyway. Uh, hope to see you all on channel. Keep the constructive chat going on in the background. If you want to, pop onto Facebook, uh, facebook.com forward slash Bushcraft Blitz, uh, and always like and subscribe. Make sure you click the like button down the bottom. I'm Bushcraft Blitz. You've been lovely. Thank you so much for watching, and stay safe on the battlefield.